actually kind of a nice way to enter into our next question <laughs> um, because it, it's it's really talking about like you know what have have you all found to be most helpful in dealing with this uncertainty right not just that from the support like that you're talking about thomas but also just i think in you know i, I mean i can speak for myself but i i can imagine so many other people are feeling this way we just feel like we're almost out on this island right even though we're all going through it together your situation is unique to you and how are you finding you know these two you kind know, of um you know to to really deal with this uncertainty in a way that that works for you i i'd have to say that the most helpful thing for me actually has been my administration in that they've done a fabulous job of communicating with with parents, with students, uh, with with faculty. They've had a very transparent decision making process. They've uh, shared regular updates. I mean, in the beginning, they were sending out updates every day of what decisions they were were looking at, what kind of decisions they'd made. The fact that uh, my parents know what to expect has has really made things a lot easier for me because that's something I don't have to worry about. Um, I don't have to be communicating with parents what the decisions are. I don't have to uh, be telling students what to expect as much, although I do have to explain what different changes mean in the context of our class. The fact that we have a common understanding of the, the base platform, if you will, has been fabulously helpful for me. I know for myself, creating a schedule, um, I know we talked about the kids transitioning, but it's a hard shift to, it, it's different and it's not as exciting teaching from your house. Um, so, so I think we weren't mandated, but I do like a daily read aloud with my kids because I, I wanted to see their face and based on how they show up every day and it's not required. They want to see mine and they can see their friends and it's our sense of being together, even though we're apart. So we have conversations and it's an anchor in their schedule. So their parents will say, okay, at 10 o'clock, we know for an hour, Miss Troxler has my child <laughs> and they can do whatever they need to do. Um, and I, you know, I've told them create a schedule. If your kid needs night school, I don't care. Like whatever works for your family, cause some are still working, but they need a routine. They need a schedule and stick to it. Cause it just makes life easier. I would agree. I, and I think too, for kids dealing with uncertainty, uh, putting organizational systems in place, certainly a schedule, but I know for our middle schoolers, uh, they've, the way that we are doing live lessons is based on day the, days of the week and their schedule. So Monday is a day where all teachers push out uh, kind of an overview for the week. So as teachers, we're not conducting live lessons on Mondays, but on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you have live lessons with periods one through four in the afternoons. And then on Wednesdays and Fridays, students have um, live lessons with periods five through seven. So that in itself, plus getting used to checking Google Classroom and other um, areas constantly for assignments and deadlines, it was really, really overwhelming for students at first, including my own, including my own middle schooler. So I came up with just a printable schedule and kids can fill it out online and I shared it with my school staff and it just listed his, it listed his, um, because he said to me, he said, mom, there are so many places I have to check. I just feel really overwhelmed with trying to figure out what is due when and when I have class because the first week, even though there was that transition period built in, that first week was really confusing to kids and kids were like, this is bar, when do we have class meeting with you? And so I made up this schedule and it's a principle that anyone can print out. And as a mom, I just put, you know, periods one through four. Here are the times of your class meetings Here's periods five through seven. There's, a, you know, there's spaces where he can physically write in his assignments and he keeps it by his computer at his desk on a clipboard. So when he sees something come through Google Classroom, he kind of jots it down. 
but I think developing systems and schedules for kids where their routine has been totally disrupted is really important and it gives them a sense of confidence moving through this period of uncertainty like okay you know even though in our state we know that now school will be closed they just made the announcement last night that they're pushing back um, we, we they kind of announced incrementally a school closure so school closure had been till April 24th and last night they announced May 15th so kids know okay until May 15th we know school will be out but at least I have these systems in place to help me because there's uncertainty as we get towards May 15th now but all right here's what I can do to help me kind of reduce the anxiety and get my head around what it is I need to be doing and how I need to be learning but we know there's also those kids where learning is not a priority right now because there's other things going on in their home so if we can do if we can provide some structure to the kids who need it then I think that helps all of us right at least a little bit I think the our school district has also been very helpful in pushing the information out to the parents, establishing routines, establishing schedules. Um, but also, I think it's important to just let the kids and let yourself just take time to laugh. Like, okay, today's assignment is just going to be an additional bonus if you can create a fun meme using something around your house or just something to give them a moment to just take a deep breath and just be silly and have some fun. Um, and just like playing that, making time to say, okay, now I can just like have a silly moment. Um, so adding that kind of has helped a little bit and the kids are enjoying um, just looking at each other. We have a Padlet and the kids are putting things up like that. Those, those moments of, okay, let's just have a silly moment and do this. And I think that's helped a lot too. Um, and it, believe me, it's like probably the assignments that get done the fastest. <laughs> are those just those silly moments. Um, but the, like you said, these routines, the schedules, they need them. Kids, they need the structure. They appreciate the structure because otherwise it's kind of too chaotic, I think, for them. Yeah. You'll love that my class Zoom on Thursday, it was optional, but it was bring your pet to Zoom day because we were ending the quarter and I had asked one of my daily questions was if you could own any exotic animal what would it be and their answers were hilarious so you know we could never bring our pets to school so why not bring your pet to zoom like I held my dog she was up here for a little while someone had their dog in their lap the entire class it was a short like 15 minutes and I said even if you don't have a pet just pop in to say hi we want to see you and it was I think the kids really enjoyed it because it was such a departure and nothing that they could you know usually share with the peer their peer group in a classroom so it worked well I said to, I invited my administrators too I said I'm not sure how this is going to go but you're welcome to pop in and see and my my assistant principal brought her dog too so I think that the kids really like seeing me in this different in this different space and then also you know having my dog something a little bit more personal that they can connect with and then an administrator too they thought that was pretty great so <laughs> we've been really trying to, to, to keep some sort of personal connection some sort of connection that you have in school beyond strictly classroom uh, we had we had virtual club meetings on Wednesday this week, and uh, a lot of kids enjoyed that. It's uh, you know because school is more it's community. It's not just you know sitting in a lecture in a classroom. It's community. It's being with people. And I think um, my administration and the advisors to different groups have been trying to keep that community spirit going. Uh, and I have to believe that that helps the kids still feel like they're part of a real school as opposed to just, you know, an assignment during the day. Some of, I think our, that um, one of our teachers and guidance counselors asked us all, everyone in this building to send in a picture and then I, to our students and with little messages and then they made it into a video and we sent it out to the parents and the students and the feedback has been tremendous. Um, and then I run student council, so we're having a virtual spirit day where everybody takes a picture of themselves wearing their school spirit wear, and then it's posted so everybody can see each other in that way. Um, so we're, like you, we're doing the clubs, trying, some of us are trying to do our clubs virtually, um, even if it's just a chance for everyone to say hey again. I know um, we have good friends who are Irish uh, dance teachers and they have their own school and it's a little bit different than, than, um, than probably what most of you are facing, but similar in a way, but you know, they're all dependent upon their parents paying the fees each month, you know, for, you know, for them making their income. But what they've done is they've really worked with all the other 
um, dance teachers that they know around the world and share ideas for what's working in the, you know, how they're able to offer parents and students, um, you know, different things that they're not able to do in person now remotely. And, and it just, this, this, I think the sharing of ideas among, um, among their, their fellow teachers has really helped them understand what they've been able to, you know, what works in their situation and how they can apply it to, uh, to what they're doing at their school. So I think it's been, been pretty interesting to watch what they're doing and, um, they deal with ages from five to 25. So it's really interesting how they can work with the younger ones more individually. I think they're doing more work now um, time-wise because they have to spend more one-on-one -on -one time with the younger ones. And, but they still need to provide that sense of community by bringing everybody together because that's especially what the older ones want is, is a chance to see their fellow dancers. So it's pretty interesting to, to listen to them and see how they've been able to, to rely on, um, on their community of fellow teachers, I think is, is a great resource. 